watching out in Concrete Five Land. We're doing a late afternoon learning session with some uh, about some new features in uh, Concrete Five Seven. Uh, these aren't totally public yet, but they are checked into Git, and they'll probably be coming your way. They may they may not be totally final yet, but uh, I just wanted to clue everyone in and uh, and have a little Q and A about it, and uh, talk about how we got to where we are today. So uh, these features center around the uh, inclusion of JavaScript and style sheets and things like that in Concrete 5. So as you may know, uh, in the beginning, uh, Concrete 5, we, were, we didn't really do a lot of automatic uh, JavaScript uh, style sheet stuff in the core. We didn't automatically include um, we didn't automatically include a lot of stuff with block level templates and things like that. We just kind of um, we just kind of let the blocks determine what they needed to include. And if you were building a site, which uh, in the beginning you were kind of a savvy developer, um, then you would be including what you needed um, in your thing. And it was up to you to make sure that the right CSS and JavaScript got included. And uh, you know that worked pretty well. Um, as a developer who knows what they're doing, it's pretty easy to understand what's uh, going where and uh, when it gets out, but especially when it's uh, super predictable because nothing <laughs> goes out automatically. It's up to you to make sure that the right JavaScript and style sheets get put in. Unfortunately, um, in the beginning, this was very inflexible. So what it meant was that while it was good for developers, uh, you weren't really able to package up stuff and make blocks, uh, you know, include style sheets and actually uh, and JavaScript and actually be um, packageable and re-distributable. So uh, there was no way for, uh, you know, you had to include everything you needed in uh, your core CSS and JavaScript files and uh, you had to include those in your theme and uh, you know it led to a lot of spaghetti code in theme files and uh, or you know a lot of homegrown solutions and uh, you had to be a savvy developer and uh, and you know as we became a bigger um, sort of more general market CMS that was becoming less and less tempting. and uh, so what you try to we tried to uh, kind of improve on that by adding uh, the ability to output uh, template assets for blocks um, in the header. So what that means is when you're uh, when you're uh, adding um, a block to your page for like the gallery or anything like that, we could automatically output the uh, fancy box library in the header and uh, any custom view.css file that you needed. And uh, that worked pretty well as well. And uh, that made it so that when you had a special template for a gallery or a slideshow, you could dump some files in a CSS and JavaScript directory with that template, and it would automatically be output. And uh, anything else that you needed, you could define through some PHP code in uh, an on-page view function in your block control. And then we finally we added some functions called add header item to output the JavaScript and CSS into your page. And you know, that worked pretty well, and it solved the problem of not being able to, uh, you know, redistribute assets along with block templates. And uh, what that gave us was some flexibility. Um, it was a lot more elegant, which was, which was nice, and uh, I think our developers really liked that. Um, we could automatically reuse assets um, when you were adding a block to a page and put them in a place that made sense, sort of semantically. Um, and you know, with add header item, we were able to say include something like the Swift object uh, JS library and uh, only include it once per page. Unfortunately, this led to some problems because features always lead to problems. Uh, as you did this, uh, we added more and more stuff into our header. And, uh, you know, back before the web was quite as concerned with performance, um, this may have been okay, but, you know, tools like YSlow and things like that uh, really led to this being a problem. And the more you dump in the header, the longer it takes for your site to load. Um, the more stuff you add into a page, the more stuff you're going to get into a header. And uh, if you add one add-on that requires one asset, and you get another add-on that does that, the sort of sandbox nature of our add-ons 
really means that both of those are going to get included, and that's tough. And finally, all this stuff was based off of file things, including at header item. And that means that if you, you know, add something like fancybox 1.1, .js and then at header item fancybox1.2, you're going to get both of those in the header. And one, that's going to be slow. And two, it's actually going to break because fancybox is kind of kind of rough that way, and it will die if you have two of if you have two libraries included at the same time. And then moreover, even if that weren't the case, they, those are functionally the same thing. You should be including fancybox1.2. You should not have one that one, and that should work. Um, instead, you're going to get them both, so your page is going to load slower, and then when it loads, it's going to die. So that's you know not very great. Um, and then there's more you know bad stuff that came about because of that. Um, using at header item for everything makes it hard for us to reorganize the core assets if we want to. So we have jQuery.js, and that works. But if we uh, decided we wanted to do jQuery2.js, we would be kind of up a creek. I mean, that's probably not the greatest example because jQuery is kind of, you know, forced on you by Concrete 5. But some of the, you know, more optional libraries like, uh, um, you know, more optional libraries like Dynatree and 5.7, things like that. Like, if we wanted to move those things around, uh, we would be having, we would have a tough time doing it. Um, and then as we added Twitter Bootstrap in 5.5, this got even worse. Uh, we wanted to use Bootstrap for the core app, but we also wanted to be able to use Bootstrap's JavaScript and styles for you know, some of our own add-ons. And that means you know, including, either including Bootstrap in the entire core app uh, JavaScript and style sheets, which is like 500k um, for a few functions, or it means including different builds of Bootstrap, and it's just a, it's a tough thing to deal with. Um, so with all of that, a third-party solution, like this chuckling about, uh, a third-party solution came about uh, to address this, and addressed it pretty well for those who were willing to tinker. Um, our uh, software got slower to the point where we had to have you know capable developers come in and actually worry about minifying our JavaScript and combining our JavaScript and injecting stuff into the footer instead of the header for us. Which is you know we shouldn't. Uh, uh, there's some egg on our face for allowing that to, to be the case. And uh, you know we have another pull request uh, in 5.5 five or 5.6 that was labored over by the community. Um, and it is a decent stopgap solution. Um, we added the concept of handles to add header item, um, which means that you could theoretically collapse all fancy box calls into one call and only include one. But you know this solution, while it while it technically works and is in use by Jordan Lebs add-ons and others, which is you know, really nice, um, you know it didn't feel like a full-fledged answer to that problem. Um, so. Uh, at, in 5.5, in an effort to make our stuff a little bit faster, we added add footer item, which means we can put JavaScript in the footer so it won't block while your page is loading, which is nice. Um, it does improve performance. Um, unfortunately, the whole output asset stuff that blocks do doesn't use this, so it puts, it puts everything still in the header. Um, you still get weird, you get weird behavior if you use add header item and add footer item on the same thing. I believe it defaults to add header item, which may or may not be the best. Um, but in certain cases, if you, it's still based on file names, so it's still pretty good. So finally, in 5.6, um, if you, this is the sort of state of where things are right now. Uh, if you add a few add-ons to a page, you're going to get a lot of HTTP requests. You can't reliably use Bootstrap without including it. Um, loading requests, even if you're logged in and Bootstrap is already there. So you can't really rely on it without including the whole thing, and that's going to you know, really degrade performance. Um, uh, just as an aside, if you add blocks to a page or an area that's not showing up, or you change the page type into, uh, into a page type that uses areas that, are no lo that had blocks in them but no longer show up, those auto assets are going to still show up in your header, which I imagine people have seen as well. So if you look in your header and realize, why is there a gallery JavaScript showing up when I deleted the gallery months ago? Um, and then uh, in order for this whole thing to work in the most flexible way, as you know, we've seen sometimes with Concrete Project in the past, uh, we really sacrifice performance a lot. So I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> um, 
I propose that we should, in 5.7, add sort of a central registry for shared assets, including jQuery, Bootstrap, uh, other stuff like Backstretch from the dashboard, um, all the new features and functionality like conversations, gathering blocks, um, all this stuff. Um, you can add to it by packages. Um, any asset type, like CSS or JavaScript, can determine where they output, whether it's the header or the footer. Um, any asset type can support post-processing, which for CSS means combining the style sheets into one style sheet and minification for JavaScript. Um, and uh, asset handles are separate from files and file locations. So what this is going to practically mean is that we define a list of handles um, and they're sort of path-based, which we'll see in a second. Um, handles are separate from files and where they live. So we'll define jQuery as being jQuery. And you know, if later on we make it be jQuery2.js.min.js.whatever, that's going to be separate. And uh, finally, it can support non-local URLs. Um, you can group these assets into asset groups, so no longer will you have to have like six add header item calls in your block when you're actually wanting to include a bunch of JavaScript. You can just say, I want to output all the assets for my conversation asset group, and that's going to pull out you know, bootstrap stuff, it's going to pull out the conversations, JavaScript, and CSS, all the stuff. And uh, themes and packages can mark these assets as being sort of provided by the theme, so then we can skip over them and not actually include them. You'll see more about this later. And finally, this supports all of the auto header items for blocks as well. So here's an example of how this might work. Um, in a, if you've ever played with the Concrete fi File Type definition stuff, where we define what file types the, the file manager looks at, this might look familiar to you. Um, so there will be an asset list object, which is what AL is in this, uh, in this context. And you can register the Swift object library. And the first parameter is the type of asset it is, which maps to a class, a PHP class. Uh, the second one is the handle. So we will define a bunch of these in sort of the core asset registry file. And uh, you can add to it, um, and then you can replace it, and we'll document what ones those are so you'll know what to look for going forward. And then finally, the location of this file. And uh, much like everything else, we will search your root.js directory, we'll search a package directory if you provide a package object um, in a subsequent parameter, which we'll get to in a second. And we'll also search the concrete directory, and that's why concrete slash js slash swift object will be registered there. Uh, here's how we would register jQuery. Um, the first three are things we've already seen. Then we have an array of sort of parameters, which we will also do our best to document. Uh, wait, the higher the number, the earlier this thing gets output. And since we need jQuery almost from the get-go, we give it a high number. Uh, you can give it a million if you wanted to. It's just give it the highest one you can. One billion. One billion. That's right. That's what Rob is do. Like this. <laughs> um, and then you for those edge cases. That's right. And since uh, and since jQuery.js needs to get out there early, we make sure that it goes into the header. By default, the JavaScript asset types get yeah, put in the foot. Um, so we are positioning it in the header. And finally, we say, no, no need to post-process, because one, it's going to be slow. And two, it's already minified, so don't worry about post-processing this particular asset. Um, here is another more complicated um, example of how we would create the jQuery UI assets and register them as a group. So the first, lit, uh, the first two should be pretty obvious. Uh, we are registering the CSS and JavaScript for jQuery UI, and then we are putting them in a group called jQuery UI. And uh, then you can use that later on to output jQuery UI should you need it. Um, here is how the conversation system in Concrete 5, 5.7 can use this to make all of our lives easier. Um, first, we're going to register Bootstrap, then we're going to register the required files, and then we're going to group everything together. And if you squint, you can probably see this. It's a little small on this monitor. Um, we are registering Bootstrap. All of the stuff here will be um, 
will be registered separately. We are going to take Bootstrap's JavaScript files and separate them out because we might need those independently for certain functional things. And then we are registering some more namespaces for Bootstrap's CSS, and we are saying all that stuff can be found in the main CCM app.css. Um, then we register the uh, JavaScript and CSS for the conversation stuff. And this is being registered under the core slash conversation handle. And finally, we're going to group all this stuff together. So <clears throat> what we can say is whenever we're going to output the assets for the conversation stuff, we are going to want to use the drop zone library, which is what lets us drop files into conversations. Uh, we want to use the bootstrap drop down JavaScript. We want to use the new observer library, which we um, which Corbin added to the core, and which lets us have events that talk to each other. And then we want to use the conversation library, which we just registered before. And then we also add a couple more CSS files. And so then, once you have this inside your conversation block, you no longer have to output a million different things or do a bunch of gifs to check to see if you don't have to output a bunch of stuff. You can just get the request that you're dealing with and uh, you can just require that asset in order to function. And what's nice about this is it will only include the required assets that have not already been included and this can include assets um, that are provided by themes. So that means if you're running a bootstrap theme, it's not going to include any JavaScript because it's going it, to, that bootstrap theme will say, hey, I already include the drop down CSS and the drop down JavaScript, so don't worry about going to get that from the core. Um, it is going to take everything and post process them accordingly, and it will be easier to, uh, it will be less likely to break in the future. Um, this is another example. Um, here is the form block working with this stuff. Um, in a sort of custom build of 5.7, I am messing around with the form block by giving it bootstraps with, uh, classes, um, including control dash group and controls and uh, some alerts and things like that. And then I am going to include some fallback styles for that, assuming you're not running a bootstrap theme, in the view.css that is output in the, uh, the form, in the form block. So, um, and that's what that third bullet point uh, is for. And then, so bootstrap-based themes will show that they already provide those styles, so they won't actually include view.css. So here is the view.css, which, which before 5.7 would automatically be output in all cases. And this just kind of gives some super basic styles to bootstrap classes that um, the form will now be using. And uh, so you can see, like, we're going to give the control label a bold font. Uh, we're going to make the muted class, which is a bootstrap class, have a slightly um, transparent look to it, etc. cetera. And um, this, these are just basic styles to make this block function. In a bootstrap theme, these are going to look great. Um, but you would not want to have the, the view.css show up inside a bootstrap theme. Um, so here, in the bootstrap page theme PHP class, we can say, hey, we already provide the following assets, so don't worry about including them. And that includes all of the bootstrap JavaScript, all the bootstrap CSS, um, the four block uh, CSS, which is what we were just taking a look at, and then some other front end stuff. Um, and so when this theme is active, none of those assets uh, matching those handles will be included since they're already there. And so here you can see what the form block under this uh, setup would look like in the bootstrap theme. And since it's given uh, control group and control label um, classes, it looks really nice. Uh, by the way, I use the, H uh, the, uh, the form tableless layout custom template as a starting point for this, and I think that's Jordan Loves and as a lifesaver. So it's way better than the core, the core form uh, template that we ship with today. Um, so you can see we also have alerts in the in the top level of the uh, like please co uh, correct the following errors. Those are all Bootstrap classes. And so here's what it looks like in Greek yogurt. Um, we have an alert class. We have you know the the form still looks pretty good. It has nice padding um, around it. The labels get uh, 
you know, they get a strong style attached to it. And that's because view.css for the form is being included here, but it's not being included in the previous screen because the block knows it doesn't have to include that file. Um, and uh, moving on, you can share assets in this new system. So here is an example of sharing fancy box between multiple packages. Um, it will not only filter out duplicate requests, but it will also get the highest version. So uh, here is a modified version of the fancy box image links tab. So here you can see we are registering fancy box um, provided by this um, by this library. It's the one that's actually included in the blocks directory for this, so you can kind of point it wherever you want it to go. And then we're also passing in a version parameter for this, and then the package object as the fourth um, parameter, in there, the fifth parameter. In there. Um, and so this version provides 1.34, and there's CSS and JavaScript. And then the sortable responsive gallery. Um, does something very similar in this modified example, and it's passing through what it actually had, which was 1.3.1, and it will register a similar group. And uh, when you uh, and when you uh, include both of these on a page at once, um, when you include both of these on a page at once, you will only get 1.3.4 output. And in the future, we will probably have to deal with uh, compatibility levels between these add-ons, because FancyBox 2, for example, is totally incompatible with FancyBox 1. But that's probably something that we can uh, deal with when we get to it at some point. Um, so this lets you really have a lot of flexibility um, without sacrificing um, performance. Um, another really nice, uh, another really nice um, you know, addition for the uh, from the system is the ability to sort of natively support CDN stuff out of the box. Uh, there's a jQuery add-on that does a really good job of this. Um, I can't remember exactly how they do it. Um, that will swap out jQuery for uh, the hosted uh, version on a content delivery network. And uh, this is how that would be done under this system. You could do it in four lines, which is uh, you would just, in this add-on, uh, register jQuery again and you then give it its version, 1.10.2. Uh, you give it a high weight, although that actually won't necessarily matter in this example. And you just uh, say local equals false, which will then make it not scour the file system looking for it, because you're already hosting it on code.jQuery.com. And this will then just go out and make sure that any instances of jQuery that are required are loaded from this spot. Um, and then finally, kind of the coolest part about this, I think, is that it's going to make our stuff faster. Um, you know, as we've tried to get better about how putting stuff in the footer, um, we still have a lot of stuff being put in the header. We still have a lot of non-optimized CSS and JavaScript, and our stuff is still too slow. And you can see that because people keep turning to third-party solutions to make Concrete 5 faster. Um, so we hope that this will help in that regard. Um, there is an asset cache that minifies and combines files. Um, it will work in edit mode. And uh, it will also work in tools files, which will let you, this whole system will work in tools files as well, which will let us split out um, stuff like sitemap, um, sitemap CSS and JavaScript um, into, into different files that, you know, for some of the smaller bits of ccmapp.js, um, you don't have to load Redactor, which is our new editor in 5.7. Um, you can load it on demand in the tools file. Um, and so this is an example of Greek yogurt site uh, running um, both in 5.6 and 5.7. This is the 5.6 version. You can see, you can't really tell from the top, but I've replaced the image at the top of the slideshow. And then there's a, a, our simple image gallery at the bottom. Um, and we are in edit mode. Um, and in this example, under 562, we have 11 external JS requests, totally 716 kilobytes, and uh, 12 external CSS requests, and totally 235. So we have almost one meg. You know, granted the browser will cache it, but the first load could be pretty, More could be floppy. pretty miserable. Yeah. 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 And then you know you're also going to get images in there, and the, yeah. some of those images are like 200k. Yeah, it's that's like we're talking a meg and a half to load that page the first time in that. Um, 
And uh, so you can see with the asset cash turned on in this example, we cut it down by almost half. So we cut down the JavaScript or the actual HTTP requests by half, if not by more than half. Um, the external CSS requests do ramp up by 12K, but that's also because we are in 5.7 as opposed to 5.6, and uh, ccmapp.css is like at least 10 to 15K larger. Um, we've got Bootstrap 2.3 in there as opposed to Bootstrap 2. Some additional stuff, jQuery UI is like 15K larger, um, but we don't blow our CSS too much, and the requests are halved. And then uh, JavaScript actually is pretty impressive because we have lost almost half of our total uh, kilobytes, our total size requests, and uh, we have lost seven actual requests. Yeah, so, it's like a single sided yeah. half density floppy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? um, yeah, I know. You, you could say like 650, oh, that's just an app, but like over a meg, it's like, oh, God, it's, it's massive. <laughs> um, yeah, so this will. Um, and uh, all of those combinations of uh, CSS files and JavaScript, they're really dependent on whether those types of assets are pre-minified or not. Uh, if something is already minified, we keep it on its own. We don't try and combine it with other stuff. Uh, we really, we're trying to make this so that it is foolproof as possible while still getting good performance, because you really don't want to, I, I would, it would be a shame if we you know, tried to cut down a few more requests and then occasionally have pages that work because you know, we're trying to identify files that can't be identified. So we do err on the side of compatibility, um, but we, we are able to uh, get some pretty good uh, bang for our buck. And uh, finally, some, uh, just some more tidbits that, about this that I think are kind of cool. Uh, that will be good for training eventually. Um, we introduced on page view because we couldn't figure out a way to add header items um, and register them in the view function of a block because by the time the block was running view, it had already been output into a page and the headers had already been sent. Well, I did a little refactoring of this and it turns out it was really not very difficult to change that. So on page view will still be supported. We still run that if it's there but you don't have to put your header items in on-page view any longer. You can just put them in the view function of your block controller, which I think will make everyone's lives easier. Um, since there's no more sort of looping through every block on a page before everything runs, um, you will no longer get assets for blocks that don't actually show up on a page um, inserted in the header or footer. Um, as I said before, tools can support assets as well. So in the sitemap overlay, we then call the sitemap, but we don't actually load the sitemap JavaScript um, when you come to the page the first time, so it's going to save a lot of time. We do a lot of that with attributes as well. So we used to be loading the jQuery rating plugin on every time we, we, uh, we were in edit mode because we couldn't figure out a way to not allow, not have it be there in case you were using a rating attribute, which like I don't imagine too many sites are actively. Um, you know, using the rating stars all the time. So um, we were able to cut that out. We were able to get rid of using ccmbase.css so that we just split those files out into more functional um, CSS files like pagination.css, et cetera. And, uh, and all of this is backwards compatible. So all the ad header items and stuff do work in the system. Um, they just, uh, for stuff that takes advantage of it, your lives will be a lot simpler. And that is it. Yeah.